Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine, your guide for the Matter and Energy and Ecosystems Unit. Let's get started. Today we will be working in lesson 1.5 called Photosynthesis in Ecosystems. Take a moment to gather the materials that you will need today. Remembering that it's helpful to have in front of you, along with your new paper for today, all of your other ideas from the past few lessons. If you are following along, here is your click path for Amplify Online. And here is how I would like you to set up that piece of paper in front of you. Pause the video and take a moment to do that. In our Matter and Energy and Ecosystems unit, we've been focused on this unit question of why did the Econauts biodome ecosystem collapse? Remember this term ecosystem refers to all of the living and the non-living things in an area. And then a biodome is just a human made ecosystem. And remember that the Econauts noticed after a few years that the plants and the animals living in this biodome didn't seem to be growing and reproducing the way they should and didn't have enough of those energy storage molecules that they needed. So our mission in this unit is to not only figure out why the biodome ecosystem collapsed, but to tell the Econauts how to build a better one and to learn from their mistakes and move forward here in a new, bigger and better biodome. So in chapter one, we've been investigating why didn't the plants and the animals in the biodome have enough of those energy storing molecules? Take a moment and remind yourself, why are these energy storage molecules important in an ecosystem? Perfect, that's right. These energy storage molecules are the things that give our plants and our animals what they need to survive. We're gonna start off today with some warm up thinking. And if you are following along online, remember at the top of your screen is our lesson and our activity number. And if I move right over to my Amplify screen, activity one, the warm up, it's right here. And I will see the questions that I'm asking you to respond to. So take a moment and please pause the video and think about these three questions. Based on what you've learned so far, why do you think the plants and the animals in the biodome didn't have enough energy storage molecules? Why do you think this claim is correct or makes sense? And how has your thinking changed since the beginning of the unit? As I was thinking about these three questions, I remember that energy storage molecules come from this process of photosynthesis. And perhaps if the animals and the plants in the biodome didn't have enough of these things, that maybe it means that there was something happening with that process of photosynthesis, because that's how they're made after all. Towards the end of lesson 1.4, we figured out these two important key concepts and what they mean about photosynthesis as well as the biotic and the abiotic matter within the ecosystem that is involved in this process. We determined that carbon, which is a type of atom, is a part of carbon dioxide in the air, which is an abiotic or a non-living part of the ecosystem. We also determined that carbon is a part of the energy storage molecules as well, which are biotic parts of the ecosystem. And that it's during this process of photosynthesis where producers or our plants make these energy storage molecules using this carbon from carbon dioxide along with energy from sunlight as well as water. And that this process moves carbon from our abiotic to our biotic parts of the ecosystem. And if you recall, our Econauts team did not have an ecologist as a member of their group. And so it's going to be up to us as the experts, as the scientists here, to explain this knowledge that we're figuring out to our Econauts in a way that they can understand so that they are able to learn from their mistakes and build a better, more sustainable biodome moving forward. So we're gonna take a moment to model how this process of creating 
or developing or producing energy storage molecules in an ecosystem works. If you have access to Amplify Online, you're gonna move into activity two and use the modeling tool to do this. If you aren't working in Amplify Online and you're using your piece of paper in front of you, you're gonna go ahead and draw out this model. Again, keeping this goal in mind, showing where the energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from. And before you pause the video to do that, I wanna bring up my modeling tool so that you can see a reference point for how you wanna draw your own. So here is my modeling tool. Um, and you can see that over here on the right-hand side are some of those components of our ecosystem. And I can continue to scroll down and see some more as well as some processes and movement uh, to show how these different components are going to interact with each other. And if I look at the main blank part of my model, I can very, very faintly, <clears throat> excuse me, see that it says abionic and bionic to kind of mimic what we saw in the sim with our abionic components of our ecosystem as well as the biotic. So if I click over here on my directions, remember that my goal here is to show where the energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from. And it's telling me some things that I should do. So I should drag some items from our components part over here on the right and add in some of those interactions with their movement and their processes. And then down below this tip is telling me that I don't need to use all of the items I only need to use the items that will help me meet my goal. If you have access to Amplify Online and you are making this uh, modeling tool in front of you, like you see on mine, go ahead and pause the video. And if you're working on paper, again, pause the video to give yourself a chance to record your ideas before I share mine. Okay, so let's check our work. As I look over here in the ecosystem, I see a producer here. And so I'm gonna click on a producer and I'm gonna drag a producer over into my model because I know that a producer is what is going to create the energy storage molecules in an ecosystem. And my goal here is to show where these things come from. So I know that a producer is going to do that so I'm gonna also drag over my actual energy storage molecules to show that a producer is the one um, creating these and is the source of where these come from in my ecosystem. Okay, I also know that the process of a producer uh, making these energy storage molecules is called photosynthesis. So I'm gonna continue to scroll and I might need to move my camera out of the way. There we go. I, I'm gonna use this process editor because photosynthesis is a process. So I'm gonna move that over. And when I do that, I have this little edit button, that little pencil thing pop up. And here's my photosynthesis option. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over because that is um, the process that we're talking about that's going to create our energy storage molecules here as an output. Okay, output means what does a process put out there into the world, okay? And in order for photosynthesis to create energy storage molecules, I also know that I need energy from the sun, so I'm gonna drag that over. And then I also need carbon dioxide from the air, so I will drag that over. And I also know that I need water for this process. However, I don't have that as an option here, so I'm just gonna leave it as. If you were drawing your model on paper and you included water as an input, awesome, keep it there. So I'm gonna press close. And there we see my process, my inputs, my outputs for these energy storage molecules in a producer. I also know that within my ecosystem that this doesn't all just like magically happen within the cells or the chloroplast of my producer on its own, that these things come from the outside environment. So I'm gonna represent that in my model as well. 
And I recall over here on the right seeing, there it is, sunlight as one of the model components. So I'm gonna drag that over because that's where that energy comes from. So I'm gonna show that interaction here with an arrow. And if you're working from paper uh, along at home, again, make sure that you have these arrows shown in and that you don't have like maybe nice color coding like I have here in my modeling tool. So make sure you're including a label for what that arrow is representing to help our Econauts really understand what this model is showing. So I've accounted for one of my inputs, the sunlight. I need to account for the other, the carbon dioxide, where that's coming from. And there's my air. I know that our carbon dioxide can live in our air, so I'm gonna show that. And then here's my carbon dioxide molecule. And once again, I need to show how that is moving from the air into the cells of my producers. And I'm gonna do that with another arrow. We love using arrows in our models in science. Again, that helps us show movement, but it's not helpful if we don't know what that movement is. So once again, mine is colored differently and I have my key over here. Make sure if you're writing yours at home that you have a label on your arrow. So let's check our work. Our instructions were show where the energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from. And I needed to drag items as my components. I needed to show how things, those components were moving and processes uh, for how these components are interacting with each other within our model. So did I do that? I have my producer, that's where this happens. I have my energy storage molecules, that's what I'm trying to show uh, where they come from. They come from a producer. And they come from a producer in this process of photosynthesis. To make photosynthesis happen and produce those energy storage molecules, I need sunlight and the energy that it contains, as well as some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. How did you do on your model? Pause the video and go ahead and share your thinking with someone near you. Now that we're able to clearly explain and show in a model how energy storage molecules are made within an ecosystem through this process of photosynthesis that occurs in producers, we need to next consider what factors affect how many energy storage molecules producers are able to make. And we need to consider this because we know that our biodome experiment failed because our plants and our animals simply did not have enough energy storage molecules to perform the functions that they need to survive. So if we're going to consider why there weren't enough energy storage molecules in an ecosystem and why producers weren't able to produce enough of them, it makes sense to me to consider those inputs, those reactants of our chemical reaction of photosynthesis. And this makes sense to me to consider these reactants, these inputs into our photosynthesis process, because I know from a previous unit in chemical reactions that I don't make new stuff I don't get rid of stuff during a chemical reaction. I simply rearrange the stuff that's there. So if this energy storage molecule simply comes from an a rearrangement of stuff and I don't have enough of these, then that means I didn't have enough stuff to rearrange to make it. So let's investigate these inputs, these reactants of our photosynthesis chemical reaction a little bit further. And we're going to use the sim to help us do that. So our mission in the sim, in order to address this investigation question of what factors affect how many energy storage molecules producers are able to make, is to find at least two ways to decrease the amount of these molecules by experimenting around within the sim. And I'm going to give you one constraint as you do that. My constraint is gonna be without killing anything. So you can't use those kill buttons. 
We know that the um, animals and the plants in the biodome were safely removed uh, once the equinauts noticed that they were having trouble growing and reproducing. So they didn't kill anything. Uh, so we're not going to kill anything either in our sim. We're going to keep that same constraint. So if you have access to the sim, you can go ahead and pause the video at this time, investigate our question, and complete our sim mission. What are two ways you could decrease the amount of energy storage molecules producers make without using the kill buttons? For those of you who don't have access to the sim or want to check your work, I'm going to go ahead and open up my sim at this time to do the same thing. Remember, if you are using Amplify Online, there's that stack menu where I can just quickly navigate to the sim and open it up. And I'm not going to change any of the, the parts, the components of my sim model at this time. I'm just going to go ahead and press play. And I'm going to wait a little bit here. Um, let's make our sim be a little bit faster because I'm kind of impatient. Um, I'm just going to wait a little bit here to let the sim kind of run its course because remember the biodome experiment didn't immediately fail. It took uh, a couple of years before the Equinauts noticed that there didn't seem to be enough energy storage molecules. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run to mimic the couple of years where the biodome ecosystem seemed to work before failing. And while it does that, I'm going to remind myself of the mission, find at least two different ways to decrease the amount of energy storage molecules producers can make without using the kill buttons. Okay, so if I am going to try to alter the outputs of a producer, then I'm going to mess around with some of the inputs, okay? I know that one of my inputs is sunlight, and I know that another one of my inputs is trap. And from this current view on the sim, it's going to really be difficult to tell um, if there is a change in my energy storage molecules. So I'm gonna change my view of the sim. If you haven't noticed down beneath here, there's this little graph looking button. So I'm gonna press that. And when I do that, I can see some actual data for the amounts of things that are going on here in the sim. I can see total carbon atoms, uh, carbon atoms, in both the biotic and abiotic section. Um, I'm gonna make sure these things are turned on. They are perfect. So let's show energy. There it is. That's what I was looking for. Energy storage molecules. And I'm just gonna leave those ones highlighted because I don't want to um, confuse myself with too much information. I just wanna streamline what I'm looking for. And that is here, these energy storage molecules. All right, so let's go back now. Oops. Go back now to the main sim. And again, if I want to change my output, I'm going to mess around with one of my inputs. And I'm going to use sunlight to start with. Today in Denver, it's a really nice, beautiful, sunny day, but we're going to get some snow soon, so it's going to get cloudy. So let me go ahead and, and show that. Okay, so I went and I just turned the sun off. It's not realistic, but we're using a model. Okay, so let's pause and let's see what happened. Oh, nothing yet. So let me let that run its course a little bit longer. And again, I'm kind of impatient, so I'm gonna speed up my time. And I can go ahead and already start to notice some things happening with the output of these energy storage molecules right now within uh, this current view of the sim. Let's go ahead and pause. And then here's my graph. Okay. What do you notice happened? What does that mean about our mission? Let's restart. I'm going to hit reset. Yep. So I think I found one way to decrease the amount of energy storage molecules. And that was by just kind of 
reducing or turning off altogether the amount of sunlight. But my mission said to find two ways. And again, I can't kill anything. If I want to change, again, the output, I think it makes sense to alter an input. So I already altered sunlight. My other input that I'm able to change here is the carbon dioxide, okay? And I have this button here called trap that I played with before. I'm gonna press that. And when I press that button, my carbon dioxide, it doesn't disappear because remember, we can't just make matter disappear. It's just moving somewhere else. So I'm just gonna keep on pressing the trap button because I just, again, I'm impatient and really wanna see what happens here. So I'm just gonna get a lot up there. Okay, that's probably good. Let's pause. Okay, check out the graph. Oh, let me turn on my energy storage molecules. That'd be helpful. Okay. So remember up here, I don't know if I pointed it out last time, but I can see the key that's indicating user changes. User is me. Um, and this little uh, triangle over here is trap. So those are all of the times that I was pressing that trap button. So first time, pressed it once, and then I started to kind of rapidly press it. Take a moment, observe, what do you notice? And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit more time because I think I saw the pattern, but the pattern didn't last a whole lot of time on my graph. So I'm gonna just continue this a little bit to make sure that pattern that I think I saw the first time holds true here after a longer period of time. Okay, so let's pause again and let's see what happened. So there's my first part and there's again my, whoops, my continued rapid fire of pressing the trap button. What did you notice happening? Awesome, I noticed it too. My energy storage molecules were decreasing. So when I check my mission, it seems like I figured out two ways to decrease the amount of energy storage molecules without using the kill button. I was able to one, change the amount of sunlight by reducing it. And number two, I was able to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide. Nice work. Our mission in the sim today really highlighted this important key concept about systems and system models. And that is if one part of a system changes, this affects the rest of the system. Remember an ecosystem is just one type of system that has a bunch of interacting parts. And when we changed one of the inputs of our system when it came to the process of photosynthesis, that one of the outputs changed. If I change the amount of sunlight, then the amount of energy storage molecules changed. And the same thing happened when I changed the amount of carbon dioxide. This key concept will be important in our work in explaining what happened with the Econauts biodome. So pause the video and record this idea on your paper. As we reflect on what we learned here today in lesson 1.5, it would be great for you to message your science teacher. They really miss you. They really miss seeing you every day and getting to learn and use science along with you. So go ahead before next time, if you can, send them a message to say hi, tell them how you're doing, explain to them what you learned about how photosynthesis works, and explain to them what you figured out today with two causes of decreasing the amount of energy storage molecules in an ecosystem. And if that's not enough for you and you want an additional challenge before we see each other next, go ahead and complete another sim mission in lesson 1.5, activity four. See you next time.